the activities of hackers and cyber criminals in recent times is threatening government presence, economic activities and security of Nigerians. And this is now generating more reaction from concerned authorities. They believe the country's national cyberspace should be protected. Cybercrime is largely seen at the level of minor financial loss in Nigeria. But as recently disclosed by Ernst Young's senior managers, the increase in spate of cyber attacks globally might be causing some Nigerian firms a loss of over $200 million yearly. The reality is a lot of financial institutions lose money daily, weekly, monthly to cybercrime in Nigeria. Of course, many of them will not be reported for obvious reasons because you don't want to lose confidence in your customers and all that. But that's one loss. That's internal loss. And there's a lot more. Given the fact that we are moving into a really an information society that depends almost solely on what's coming out of the internet to make you a competitive economy, make you a competitive enterprise and all of that, we cannot afford to be held back by not having the appropriate legislation to contain cybercrime. Cyber threats such as malware and attacks are becoming extremely sophisticated. This is especially true with the increased presence of organized criminal groups online. The internet has ceased to be the domain of the technically competent. In the past, the Economic and Financial Crimes Commission EFCC, had raided cyber cafes to arrest fraudsters associated with sundry internet crimes. However, experts say fighting cyber crimes go beyond raiding cyber cafes. It requires a holistic approach. We're going into the issue of cyber crimes in now, and we have joining us in the studio Bankole Onua Femi. He is the editor of the TechBio.com. Thanks for joining us right now. Thank you for having me. You're welcome. Good morning. Now, let, let help us to understand when in Nigeria, when you talk about cyber crime, uh, people mention the word 419, and that's the first thing that comes to mind. A lot of people don't even know the breakdown. Actually, what is 419 and all of that? But help us to understand what really constitutes cyber crime. Uh, cybercrime is quite different from uh, 419. 419 okay. is advanced fee fraud, mm. um, as defined under the criminal uh, uh, code. Mm. Uh, cybercrime is crimes we perpetuate via electronic means. Um, so it doesn't, it is not restricted to advanced fee fraud. So um, the 419 uh, phenomenon will be a subset of the things that can happen in the context of uh, cybercrime, yeah. as long as it is crime that is perpetrated but using electronic means, whether it's identity theft, it's phishing, it's um, hacking or breaking into secure computer systems for the purpose, obviously, of um, compromising them, sabotaging them, or you know, just stealing information, then that will be cybercrime. And it's All a right. very broad um, space. Indeed. Nigeria ranks 16th in the Cyber Attack Vulnerability Index for Africa. Uh, that's up behind Namibia and Malawi. What, what is responsible for that? Um, Nigeria's place on the cybercrime index, um, it's, it's, it's a, cybercrime is a global uh, phenomenon, you know, obviously, and because we have uh, internet penetration, that is way more than most African countries, there's about 43%. Uh, I think it's, a proportion, it's a directly proportional to the amount of computer use and internet use um, in, in those countries. So if you find it, uh, if you find Nigeria ranking uh, higher than other yeah. African countries, then that's directly proportional to the fact that we use more technology than most um, African countries. Mm. All right, make us understand too, when people in, get themselves involved in cybercrime, what is really, what are they looking for? What, what is that push? So it's, um, it, it's, it's not different from people who are perpetrating crime offline in the first place. Um, mm. Criminals or criminals anywhere, whether they are perpetrating via electronic means um, or whether they're doing it offline. So the person who went to the bank to steal money is not different from someone who's, you know, um, accessing secure bank systems and siphoning uh, money through those things. It's the same motivations. There is no distinction per se. Um, if anybody decides to go um, to 
to a life of crime, then the motivations go beyond whether they're you know, using electronic means or not. It's the same motivations, it's the same psychological or economic, socioeconomic um, circumstances that push them to, towards that. A thief that. is a thief, either online or offline. They're a thief. Okay, so. <laughs> <laughs> <means> a thief. <laughs> okay, so what are the techniques really when it comes to cyber attacks, cyber crimes? What do we look out for? What are the, are the methods of... Uh, uh, there, there are many ways and you know depending on uh, what the context is so in a personal context you yes. you have um, identity theft um, credit card skimming um, sort of thing where people are looking at your what you're pressing um, at the ATM machine which is why you have all of the warnings that say you know make sure you're looking so, um, somewhere do not give someone um, your ATM card to go use at the, at, at the, at the bank point uh, but in an enterprise context and there are even it's an even larger scale so we're talking about um, uh, uh, really invasive type of attacks from uh, phishing to uh, you know compromising the whole uh, systems and uh, ransomware you know where they basically compromise the the the, the information or the, the private uh, files of those companies and then they ask them for large amounts of money uh, to give them back and the way mm. these things typically happen is when they compromise uh, um, the email accounts of you know employees and then use that to gain even more access into you know more secure uh, higher level files and then they compromise the whole system and we've seen that happen in, you know, in the case of the Sony hack uh, where mm. you know it was basically an e um, employee's email that was compromised and they used that to gain access to the entire network and downloaded all the emails and that became a global uh, scandal. All right, now, when someone is, like, I know that uh, just like fighting crime on the streets where the police is there, in the, on the net where these things happen by, through technology and all of that, I know that there are structures to try to check all of this, but if we bring it down to Nigeria, how effective has it been tracking these people who are involved in this this? Uh, and so it's kind of like neither here nor there. We know that the Electronic um, you know, uh, Financial Crimes Commission um, obviously has been working hard over the past uh, uh, you know, few years to try and keep up um, with all the methods that people uh, use. But in terms of actual prosecution, it's been you know, how many people have they actually you know, charged or convicted. And we were talking um, earlier about them raiding cyber cafes, mm -hmm. but that is even where it's a fraction of Cyber crime that actually happens in cyber cafes. Most sophisticated hackers are on private networks mm. on their own computers. They're not bit Yahoo Yahoo boys who go and, uh, mm. uh, into cyber cafes. They can afford expensive, uh, you know, complicated machinery and software, you know, to hack and penetrate these systems. So there is a lot that needs to be done in terms of just being technically capable of, uh, you know, stopping these people. And obviously, in, from a from, from, uh, from, from, from the victim standpoint, in terms of the corporations or the people that are the victims of cybercrime, there's a lot of education that needs to happen on their part in terms of how they need to keep their own you know, information safe, how they need to create firewalls and invest in security software, invest in sec security technology, and also you know, basically do all the things that make sure that the back doors that these people go coming through are, are secure. And working together, uh, the government and the private sector, and also sensitizing individuals is what is going to stop uh, oh, well, the privacy on, on the, the, the social uh, network, the, yeah. the Facebook, the WhatsApp, yes. uh, sometimes people get information about you from those uh, network. How can, what kind of software or wh how careful can you be really? So finding out about people from social media is something, it's, a, it's another subset of um, um, cybercrime called social engineering and it's basically if people can stalk you, if they can follow you around for long enough, they can deduce certain things about your lifestyle or patterns. Yeah. Uh, they're not necessarily breaking into your account per se uh, to find out your personal information or your habits or your trends and, and things that they can use to hack you, but if they pay attention enough uh, to, what you're, to your online um, usage Post. patterns, then they yeah. might be able to uh, gain access. Uh, to you, but then that also requires for people to be very careful about the things that they do online. So, broadcasting your location, for instance. But what, what happens in cases where sometimes the, the, the network will send you a message that your your account has been hacked, and somebody tried to log into your account using a different password. So that is a that is a that is that is typically um, a phishing attempt, and phishing attempts are only successful when the user is careless. Um, so if you get a link in your DM or in your message and you click on that and put in your login details, that is always a bad idea. It means that there's someone on the other end 
who wants to collect your information. If you're logged into a social network or a service, they will not ask you to put in your login details via some shady you know, message. So people need to be very careful about the kinds of messages they get and the, where they put their login information. Make sure it's the official site. Check in the address bar. Make sure that there is a green padlock that basically identifies the site as secure. Uh, make sure that it is HTTPS compliant. That way you know that it's secure. And do not put your login information onto a page that you do not recognize. Basically making sure that you're not giving your login information to those people because when once they get it, they'll go log in and then they can do all kinds of things from obviously compromise your bank accounts or you know access your secure information. Okay, now let's give some background information in here. An internet user is an individual who can access the internet at home via any device type and connection. Now the number of internet users in Nigeria has been on the rise over the years. With a population of more than 180 million people, data from internet lifestyles shows that more than 86 million Nigerians use the internet and the internet penetration rate presently stands at 46 percent. The internet also called the cyberspace connects the world without any boundaries. Of course, the issue of global phenomenon that come, global village phenomenon that comes in place. The perilous nature of the internet has led to an upsurge in criminal activities in recent times. Now, cybercrime is any illegal behavior committed by means of or in relation to a computer system or a network. Now, computer attacks can be generated by criminals from anywhere in the world and executed in other areas, irrespective of geographic location. Now, these criminal activities are faster, easier, and more damaging with the use of the internet. Some of the common forms of internet crimes penetrated, perpetrated in Nigeria are hacking, software piracy, identity theft. Bankwale mentioned that earlier. Electronic fraud, online spam, intellectual property theft, cyber terrorism, malware attacks. Ah, this is scary. Uh, cyber crimes and of course the issue of terrorism that is so scary now absolutely um when what dimension to that take does that take <laughs> i mean so it's even uh, cyber warfare mm. is uh, one of the emerging global themes now where nations actually you know use technology to gain access to secure uh you know healthcare military defense uh, systems and compromise and they can even compromise whole economies if they you know gain access to the right systems and that is um, uh, we're seeing a digital arms race you know heating up between you know the large uh, global superpowers uh, but from a terrorism standpoint um, obviously governments need to invest uh, more in obviously you know uh, software that defends them um, from you know hackers and these people are pretty getting national websites for it is that's not even you know what we're talking about we're talking about them getting access to you know secure national uh, uh, defense uh, information where they can actually see you know the movements of certain kinds of people or healthcare systems uh, traffic information uh, the more advanced the country is technologically the more vulnerable it is to cyber attacks okay now we'll, we'll come back to <coughs> excuse me now several bills on cybercrime had been pushed to the National Assembly by the Nigerian IT experts, but none scales through until the Cybercrime Act was signed into law in May 2015. It is the first of its kind that criminalizes illegal online actions, prescribing punishment and creating legal procedures for investigation, uh, protection and enforcement. According to the Minister of uh, Communications, Adebayo Shitu, Nigeria loses about 127 billion naira to cybercrime annually about uh, uh, $9.3 billion is lost to cybercrime emanating from Nigeria alone across the globe, according to the Cyber Security Association of Nigeria. I want to, let's, let's take the, uh, the, the Cybercrime Act of 2015 and some of the provisions in the act. Uh, for instance, if, uh, if, you're, if an offense is committed, the, the, it requires that you report such cases to the National uh, Computer Emergency Representation Center, a coordination center. The individuals and organization that needs to prosecute uh, I mean, violators of this uh, code would need to identify digital forensic services. That means uh, for, 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 for if you have to report a case now, whatever case you're reporting now has to be verified using the digital forensic services to to do that how how convenient is that in the in the in the face of, of the speed at which these uh, uh, crimes are committed 
Uh, to be honest, I'm sure that those systems are inadequate as, as they currently stand. And what needs to happen is they need to evolve uh, rapidly. If um, uh, a, a, a cyber crime has been perpetrated and you know money's lost, uh, information's, uh, information is missing, um, these processes will typically take not days, they'll take weeks, even months. You know, for for people to report to the right uh, authorities mm -hmm. and for those authorities yeah. to take action, the longer it action, takes, the, longer it takes <coughs> the harder it is to find. Uh, and, they have you know, so, exactly. So, um, I mean, it was passed in 2015, but yes. it's hardly 2015 compliant. Um, a 2015 compliant response uh, to the situation. It needs to be much, much faster. Okay. Now, the internet and AT internet and ATMs remain the most popular channels for e-fraud, with point-of-sales terminals being the preferred channel of cash out for fraudsters. Now, banks in Nigeria lost more than 150 billion naira to electronic frauds and cybercrime between 2000 and 2013. That's according to the Information Security Society of Africa, Nigeria. Uh, checking cybercrime activities was one of the reasons why the Central Bank of Nigeria introduced uh, the biometric verification number. That's your popular BVN. Mm. So according to a report by the Internet Crimes Complaint Center, Nigeria ranks third among top ten perpetrators of cybercrime. That's mm. the world. Well, also, Nigeria was ranked the 20th country most targeted globally by cy for cybercrime by Checkpoint Software Technologies on the world cyber threat map. Now, the report shows that Tanzania was the most attacked country in the world in October 2015, while other African countries in the top 20 are Malawi, Namibia, Mauritius, Tunisia, and Ethiopia. All right, now, uh, Bank Holiday, yeah, even though we don't have all the time now, but <coughs> when, <coughs> for instance, all the, uh, com if you're coming up with a company and you have um, a lot of te te technology and all of those, uh, how do you protect against hacking, for instance? Anyone who wants to hack into your system, how do you, what are the things you do to protect? Mm. So absolutely, the, the first things that need to happen is make sure that the computers that you're working with are secure and really the, the weakest link in your security chain is how uh, people come in by the back door. So if you have um, a lot of employees, um, they need to be educated about the need to make sure that their computers are secure. They're not going on, you know, websites that uh, are potential breeding grounds for malware. They're not, and, and you know, obviously the shady places on the internet are the places where uh, viruses, malware, basically things that install themselves on a computer and give hackers access um, live. And if they are visiting those websites, um, then there's going to be a problem. The other thing is communications are going back and forth um, uh, um, from your company to other companies. Mm. Uh, they, they, they need to make sure that they're not clicking on, you know, um, suspicious attachments. And that is one of the ways. In fact, well, we've been noticing that people will get e emails with things called invoices or your payment is ready. Mm. Whenever you click on those things, you're exposing your computer, you know. So at, a, at an organizational level, apart from implementing the regular mm. firewall and securities and all of those things, make sure that your employees are educated about you know, the dangers uh, uh, of, of cyber crime and make sure that they are acting in ways that do not leave them vulnerable because that's where the, the, the major challenge is. People can invest thousands of dollars in security software, but education, user error is how people typically you know, lose their way. All right, Banco Luluafemi, thank you for giving us that insight. We'll look forward to more time for us to uh, dwell on other areas as far as uh, cybercrime is concerned. But thank, thank you, you for much. coming. Thank, thank you for having me. Thank you.